Hey film friends, I'm Nick Furman. This is Furman on Film. Welcome to the channel. Okay, here's the single greatest thing I can say about Beverly Hills Cop Axel F. This film is way better than Beverly Hills Cop 3. But hey, Eddie Murphy and the whole gang are back this time around. And the word on the street is lots of Tiger Balm and Icy Hot on the set. <sighs> Let's run that back. And some welcome newcomers to lower the age median and, you know, add some emotional heft and psychological baggage so we have a proper legacy sequel. This is Netflix's new hit, Beverly Hills Cop, Axel F. Guys, you know, this one's been getting a lot of hate, and I've gotta say, I just don't get it. It's a total throwback action flick, like an update on the 80s original. It's a Simpson Bruckheimer production, which means the stakes are meant to feel big and real, but really it's a popcorn flick with great action set pieces and a whole lot of laughs. They really just don't make them like they used to. But there is one thing that they have been making ad nauseum, and that's the legacy sequel. Holy crap, have they ever. I mean, you could cut it if you're putting the camera up or whatever. I think for all of these pictures about aged stars returning to franchises from the past, the critical grounds for analysis is about one thing, homage versus rote repetition. Does your film just play the hits or does it try to do something new and original? And if it does just get us back in the car with Axel Foley, is that an enjoyable place for us to be? Well, as to the first question, we get the answer in the opening 10 minutes. The film is downright hagiographic. The number of what? times you hear- Whoa, what does that mean? It's a piece of writing that praises or idealizes a subject. Well, why not just say that then? Maybe just stick to camera work. Anyway, the number of times you hear the word Foley with a head shake in the first 10 minutes. The movie opens with Glenn Fry's The Heat Is On blasting the heat is on. before giving way to Bob Seger's shakedown. All the while, we're getting B-roll cuts of the denizens of Detroit. Sound familiar? Oh, it is. Then we get a massive set piece of a vehicular chase. Yep, just like the original. Then Foley gets yelled at by the chief. You still following? It's just beat for beat plot-wise, guys. All the way down to an ending in a villa. But that's all I'll say to avoid spoilers. Fortunately for us, this rote repetition is still pretty enjoyable. It's Mark Malloy's first time in the director's chair, but the dude knows how to shoot action. I mean, it's not Man or Cameron, but it's better than a lot of stuff out there. And a bunch of the throwbacks, if you love the first two films, go down like a bit of warm, nostalgic goodness. The tossed off Nigel Applebottom reference, the 10 minute sequence of Bronson Pinchot as the flamboyant real estate agent Satterge. Satterge. Sa Satterge. 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 This one actually doubles down and adds Nassim Pedrad for even more hilarity. Taggart and Rosewood are back cracking wise and mostly lifting the proceedings. I wasn't for a second surprised by any of the plot movements, but I didn't care. It was fun and airy. And by adding in a strange child subplot and a cliched unforgiveness arc, remember, parent is always the parent and the child is always the child. We didn't mess this up, Axel. You messed this up. Axel F was really better than it had any right to be. Hey guys, I've got an idea. Let's do the same thing that worked before in our movie, only be 40 years older. I mean, it's like I said before, it's almost alarming how much this is like the original. Which mostly works, because even though this film doesn't push the series forward, it does update it in key moments. And almost all of this happens through Taylor Page's Jane Saunders character. She is the spurned daughter of Axel, a lawyer with her own axe to grind at getting wrongfully convicted felons off. But they use her in this movie in two ways. The first is as a foil to the kind of motor mouthing that made Eddie so famous in the original. It's like Eddie starts into one of his routines to make the magic happen, and then she comes up and subverts it. 
or turns the dialogue in a different direction. It's effective for storytelling, but the net result is that Eddie is nowhere near as funny as he was in the 80s when he was flying too close to the sun. The second thing is that while her presence shifts these dynamics, adding themes like guilt and regret, the way all of this gets worked out in the film is, well, like a Simpson Bruckheimer flick. Which means it's just a little ABC paint by numbers. Just apologize, say you're sorry, get yourself in some life and death stakes, and it'll probably all turn out all right. For a film that's trying so desperately to modernize its message in some places, it's really pretty old school and trite with its writing. Honestly though, my biggest beef with this film is in the Kevin Bacon character. I just said beef and bacon. There's not a whiff of nuance to his presentation and motivations. The whole bad guy plot, in fact, is so tired that you'll forget about it by the time the credits roll. In the end, Axel F is a film heavy on nostalgia and light on new ideas and directions. So, what do we conclude? Beverly Hills Cop Axel F is a nostalgic throwback that leans heavily on the charms of the original films, while introducing some new faces to freshen up the dynamic. Despite its predictable plot and occasional lack of originality, the film's competent direction and engaging set pieces make it an enjoyable watch. The addition of new characters, especially Taylor Page's Jane Saunders, adds layers of emotional depth. Ultimately, Axel F is a delightful little trifle that's perfect for streaming light on its feet with an undemanding plot. And who doesn't love having Eddie Murphy's hysterical one-liners back in our lives once again? Well, there you have it. The only thing left to discuss is our rating for this picture. FOF gives Beverly Hills Cop Axel F 3.4 out of five stars. If you enjoyed this review, please let us know by giving us a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. Also, don't forget to visit FermanOnFilm.com for even more movie content. Thanks for watching. I'm Nick Furman. This is Furman on Film. Stay firm, my friends. <laughs>